Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Thursday, August the 31st, 2023. Thursday, August the 31st. Well, uh, one of the first scenes was the cutest scenes to me, and that's little Leo. Little Leo comes into the little uh, family room, and he sees Brooklyn sitting there. you know, just feeling bad about her betrayal of the company, really. And Leo says, Brooklyn, are you okay? And she goes, I'm just having a bad day. And he sits next to her and he goes, do you need a hug? And she looked at him and she says, that would be so nice. So he, they reach in and he gives her a big hug. He's holding some kind of treat, you know, he got from the kitchen in his hand. Kind of reminds you of those little flat, I don't even know what they're called, but kids love them. You know, little fruit roll up, kind of like thing un unrolled. Looks like the cherry flavor or maybe strawberry. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't even matter. But anyway, <laughs> he was just the cutest, cutest thing and so sincere. And Olivia walks in and she sees it, you know. And so she goes, Leo, what are you doing with that from the kitchen? Didn't you ask me to make you your favorite dinner? And it was either Manicani, Manichetti, whatever, his favorite Italian meal. She goes, that will spoil your dinner. Go put that back. And I thought, well, how are you going to put that back? I kind of think those things got to be, well, anyway. So, <laughs> like, go put that in the trash, right? So he said, okay. And he goes out and then she's like, what's wrong, Brooklyn? And of course, Tracy, I'll tell you what's wrong with her. So Tracy then goes into, you know, she got a lesson in business and this, that, and the other. And she should have said, and a lesson on, on, on how not to get caught up in blackmail because I got her good, <laughs> you know? So Brooklyn ends up storming out the room, you know, saying, because of you, I betrayed my friends. And Tracy's like, Psh. And Olivia's chiming in and Tracy would go, Shh, this doesn't concern you. It was so cute. And so Olivia's like, well, this is my house. This is not your house. This is Monica's house that my brother, you know, gave it to her. Like, I don't know why he did, but anyway. But if you notice more and more, Olivia's chiming in saying, this is my house. <laughs> right? This is my house. And guess what, everybody? When Monica does go, wouldn't that be something? She actually just might leave that house to Olivia. And I would like to see that because Olivia embodies a lot of Lila's characteristics. Olivia's a staple. So I would like to see the Quartermain Mansion go to Olivia. Not Ned and Olivia, because see, Ned could be Eddie for how long? And it's up to Monica who she chooses to leave the house to, because Jason is gone. She might choose to leave it to Drew, but I don't know. I would say Olivia, but we shall see. Anyway, that, you know, I don't even know why they're not writing Monica out anytime too soon. So next we have. Um, Spencer and Alexis have a talk. He meets her at the top of the pool. She's checking in while Laura's gone. And they end up having a good talk. And, you know, he's just talking about his little brother's the light of his life. And he's so happy he can be there for his little brother. Right. And Alexis says, you know who you sound like? And Spencer says, I think I know what you're going to say. And she goes, you sound like your father when you were born. He was so proud of you. And he wanted to give you everything. So much so that you were very precocious and Spencer said, spoiled. 
child. Should have said spoiled brat. <laughs> you know. Um, so they had a good talk. And, you know, she says, look, I she changed the subject to Esme. She says, I can't believe I'm saying this. But Esme is actually getting quite good at her job. And Spencer said, really? And she said, yes, I do believe having daycare on site. You know, she's able to stop in and, and, and peek in on Ace on her break and interact with him. And then at lunch, she's in there interacting with him a lot on her lunch break. I, it's allowing them a chance to really bond throughout the day. And I thought, well, all businesses that would finally embrace on-site daycare would find that to be true. It really would. That would help so much, you know, on-site daycare at an, at an affordable price. Less worry on the parents, especially new parents. You, you got young babies. You want to be able to peek in and, and, and see your baby, you know, anyway, another topic. So anyway, Spencer's like, well, you know what? I can't believe that I'm saying this, but my main reason for, for moving in was to, for one, keep an eye on Esme and be there for my brother. He said, because I, I can't forgive what Esme did to me and my friends. He says, but watching her with Ace, she's a good mother to him. Spencer says, I, I have to admit. See, remember, Spencer was going to try to rip Ace from her. Oh, oh, but now he's seeing she loves that boy. So anyway, they have their conversation throughout the entire show. They went back to them way too much, if you asked me. Um, and now what they're saying about Little Miss Betty, Betty is on vacation in Mexico. And actually, they said it on yesterday's episode when Sonny was talking to Brick. Brick or two days ago, that, yeah, Betty's in Mexico, but Sonny's got his people with eyes all on her in case he need to snatch her up. <laughs> He's like, that girl ain't off the hook yet. He's trying to let things play out, and he probably got a little something, something ready for Betty once they do tidy up the situation. He'd be like, you thought I forgot, girl? You came into my house? You stole from me? Under the guise of taking care of my daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. But Betty's allegedly on vacation. And this is where we, we talked about Brooklyn. I should have showed this picture earlier. Or did I show it twice? No, I didn't. I should have showed it after Leo and Brooklyn. Because this is when Tracy came in. And Brooklyn, do you see her? She's For once, she's not doing the Brooklyn. She's doing a... Ooh, she's so mad. She's so mad at Tracy, she could spit. And she told her out of everybody in this family that have always sided against you. I always sided for you. I always took your side. I always spoke up for you, Tracy. And now this is... Mm -mm. She says, I, I can't even. And so she just huffs out of there. And that's when Olivia was like, you know, she really did look up to you. She really did. And Tracy's like, and she got a lesson in business. <laughs> Tracy. But so, something Olivia said at the end kind of hit home for Tracy. Just the look on her face. Like, oh, okay. Huh. But anyway, so now that this was cute. Robert and Diane. Diane was at the courthouse trying to get some information if she could. You know, she was actually looking for Robert. She was happy she ran into him. Um, and she talked to Robert about, and oh, it's funny. Remember when she and Robert left Kelly's the other day? I thought she was going on a ride in his new car, but I guess she was, she didn't, you know, she was busy because he asked her for to go for a ride in his new car again today. And it's so funny the way he does it. And she chuckles every time. They, they don't make a cute couple. 
They really, really will. When they finally, two years from now, let them get together. Um, so the conversation boiled down to, because she wanted to know if Robert could get with the WSB to see if he could pull some strings to help Drew. And he goes, ooh, for one, I'm the last person the WSB will pull any strings for. He says, they're doing a whole revamp, shake up, reorganization. And I don't even know what's going on there. But it, they discussed it and it came out that for the judge to be this harsh, he goes, the WSB obviously wants Drew out of the way for some reason, right? And they said, but for one, we don't know if this judge is, you know, with the WSB or subcontracted, one of their judges in their pockets. And so Diane says, okay, but you know what? That gives me something to look at. I'm going to go back and go through all his past cases where he's given an overly harsh, because there was no reason for him to give Drew what he gave Drew. No reason whatsoever. He said, but Robert said, look, let me tell you something. Drew Kane and those that went to Greenland did what the WSB never were able to do. They were the ones that rescued everybody and ultimately brought Victor to justice, even though the WSB was the one that bombed the boat. But, you know, Drew, Laura, the whole crew, Valentine, led them not to bomb the island where everybody was, but that Victor was on the boat. So, it, and, you know, he goes, he, he, they, he embarrassed them. So there's no reason for them to help him. He's right where they would want him. So Diane said, okay, I got my work. Cut. He goes, you do know you've got your work cut out for you. Trying to link a connection between that judge and the WSB. And Diane said, you know what? If there is a connection, I will find it. My friend, right? And he goes, Robert pretty much is like, and if, it, if anybody could find it, it's definitely going to be you. So, you know, that was good. He offered her up as much information as he could, and, you know, gave her some insights. And now she has a direction to go on. Because what they're going to have to do, because remember, Drew pleaded guilty. So really, there's no reason that another judge would look at this case again and say bias. But if Diane can show past history for certain individuals, this judge gives overly harsh sentences, then Drew's can be overturned based on that. So hopefully, I, you know, because let's face it, they're not going to have Drew gone for no three years off of General Hospital. Serious. So Diane is going to get get that overturned, which is going to be really, really good. And I can't wait. Uh, so then we have, oh, at the end of the show, we've got uh, Ava called out Austin and Mason over to her house. And Ava um, says she's demanding the body. I, I delivered. I got Betty into Sunny's apartment. She got the information. I want that body. And Austin is like, well, if you get the body, what you going to do with it? She goes, have it disposed of in the Pine Barrens. And he goes, is there a better place than that? She goes, I don't want it around here. She says, I don't want it around here because I couldn't even live on this island. And then she goes, as a matter of fact, I don't know why I'm living here. And I was thinking, I know Ava. That was ridiculous. She goes, I only wanted this place because I wanted to keep Nicholas from having it. Nicholas is out of the picture. I don't want this place. My thing is give it to Spencer. It's his family's legacy. Why would you sell it? It was given to you. Give it to Spencer. Right? Just have it transferred to him. Or to the Cassadine estate whatever but she's gonna sell it and meanwhile we've got uh lucy was talking to martin 
mad at him, feeling like he just betrayed her, left her. She point blank asked him, did you see a similar product like the Deceptor? So when, when we were talking about its, its, its conception, that you, you, you use that model? And he goes, she goes, did you steal the idea from Tracy Quartermain? And he goes, no, I did not. See, here we go. It wasn't Tracy. It was ex-wife number three. He wasn't lying to her when he goes, no, I did not steal from Tracy Quartermain. Because she goes, she told him how Brooklyn, Tracy used Brooklyn to get the actual schematics of the deceptor. And Martin, he, he, under his breath, he goes, ooh, so she actually used her granddaughter. Like, hmm, I didn't think she'd do that. And Lucy said, wait, what? And he goes, oh, I'm just, she would use her own granddaughter. He tried to clean it up. And I thought, no, <clears throat> you are hanging Lucy out to dry. As Lucy says, and why is it you keep insisting that I leave your name out, <coughs> out of it? Anything deceptor. She goes, when you were a critical part of me coming up with this idea. And he goes, that's because it's a 100% your idea. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. And Lucy knows it wasn't. That's why she's so afraid of losing everything. It has not ever been her idea, ever, right? And she knows it. She couldn't come up with a date. She first scribbled that down on nothing, right? So anyway, um, that was what was that conversation going on, right? So now we have uh, Ava. She picks up the phone. She's calling Lucy, and she told Lucy, "Do you still have your real estate license?" And Lucy's like, "For the right property." She goes, "I want to sell Windermere Spoon Island." And Lucy perked up, right? Because the commission on that, she could keep that company alive. The commission on selling Spoon Island, Spoon Island has never been sold. It stayed in the family. I'm sure it was sold when the Cassidines first bought it years and years ago. But I really don't think it'll go that far because that rightfully should be Spencer's, his birthright. So Austin... When when Austin and Ma Mason comes, Ava had, had called Mason over when she's talking to Austin about, I don't even want to live here. The doorbell rings because he goes, I'll text Mason and see, you know, where we at with getting Nicholas's body. So about that time, the doorbell rings and Ava looks at him. She goes and answers the door and it's Mason. She summoned him too. And Austin looks and she tells Mason, I have done everything, everything that you and your boss wanted me to do i want you to live up to your end of the bar bargain i want nicholas's body so he goes well you know the powers that be made a decision that you get nicholas's body back when this whole ordeal or whole situation that's in motion finishes plays out and she goes that wasn't the deal and he goes look settle down it's going down tonight so you should have your answer real soon. So she shows Mason the door, shows Austin the door, because Austin was lingering on. And she goes, oh, no, 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 no. See you later, too. So Mason and Austin are outside, and Austin says, look, whatever's going down tonight, I ain't, that's all on you got. I'm not having no part of it. And Mason looks at him, and he says, listen, you do have something to do the night, tonight. The boss wants it done. So all of a sudden, next scene, last scene, we see Austin coming up to the Paul Tuck place that remember that, um, what's his name? Peter August had Maxie kidnapped too. So he walks in the door with the key and he says, hey, how are you doing? And when the camera panned over, it's the replacement uh who was it nicholas coma marcus coma whoever the other nicholas was that didn't want to wait look that wasn't no three months was it 
did they tell him, look, we writing you out for six months? <laughs> That's a long time not to have any money coming in. But look, he didn't know there was going to be a strike, did he? Because at least now this actor gets to come back, who I don't like as Nicholas. To me, they should have taken the time to recast. Um, he's back as Nicholas. So he's drinking a beer, sitting there happily. I'm fine, Doc. So now we're going to find out, are they going to have a yet another amnesia story? Or he's hanging out to make Ava sweat and squirm because they told him she think you dead and we got a use for her and this is punishment for her. We'll see. I don't know. I kind of believe he may not, there's something maybe going on that he doesn't remember because I can't see him wanting not to ever meet his newborn. I can't see that. Right? So we'll see what state of mind Nicholas is truly in uh, the next time they show him. So that's it. That's it, everybody, for today's General Hospital. Let's see. That's all I have for it. Excellent. Excellent. So now let's go to comment corner, comment corner. I'm going to breeze right through these comments. Okay. Comment corner. Sabrina says, hello, Daily Recap Lady. Loved your recap and theories regarding Brooklyn. Let's see if she is charged with corporate espionage because uh, like Carly and Drew, she is guilty. I don't see how Maxie or Lucy could ever trust her again, but they have already started to make excuses for her and more than likely won't press charges against her. Regarding Gladys, like you, I think Miss Wu is going uh, to get that money and I think she's going to kill her. But when she turns up dead, Nina will tell Sonny everything regarding Sasha. Time, time is running out. That crazy doctor is going to sh do shock therapy. Yep. On her next. And the funny thing is, if they do it that way, that is the complete replay of the Carly story when Jason saved her from the shock therapy. The writers have written this character in a corner. In my opinion, they have done her so very wrong with that, without taking into consideration what the character has been through. Just my thoughts and theories. Yeah, I can't stand what they've done to Sasha. Absolutely. I'm with you, Sabrina. Cindy says, Tracy is horrid, but she's not to blame for, Brooke, for what Brooklyn did. Brooklyn chose to do what Tracy wanted. Tracy's secret was that she was the one that got Chase's bad badge back. What an awful secret is that? It's not. That was ridiculous to be blackmailed to steal company information regarding that, right? It's ridiculous. Um, that's no big deal. Brooklyn should have refused to do what Tracy's bidding and Brooklyn alone is responsible for choosing to do it. She could have chose, she could have chose to go to Chase and tell the right, tell him what happened, like she ended up doing. So no. When Brooklyn is faced, remember when Link uh uh told her you sign this non-disclosure, I'll give you your songs back, but you you will have to back me, you're gonna have to, you know pretty much say the other women have cases have no merit. When faced with that decision, what did Brooklyn do? She got her songs back, didn't she? She always does the wrong thing. She always makes the wrong choice and that's Brooklyn. And then Ron says, a smart psychiatrist would have seen through Cody's behavior. It's like he's making up the situation as he goes along. I know. And then hello there says, I'm not sure. I'm not so sure Cody was uh, making some of it up. Some of it was his real life. I, I did hear that. I mean, his real experiences. User uh, says, Chase knows what Brooklyn did. She told him. Yes, yeah, she did tell him. PE says, uh, they should hire fans to do the writing during the strike. <laughs> Linda says, Gladys is marked for death. Selena is going to take her out because the amount she owes for Selena is too big. 
and she's not going to let Gladys off the hook. Bye, girl, <laughs> Gladys. By the time Dante finds out about Sasha's situation, Sasha would be dead. Sonny needs to move on it now, not tomorrow now. That is so true. When have we ever seen Dante really solve a case? And Sasha's situation is a situation. It's not a police case. He has other police cases on his desk. Sasha's going to be in the back burner. Sonny should say, okay, son, and then turn right back around and, and do his thing. Lucy says, team Cody and Sasha. Um, that's uh, Joe Tecinelli. I'm sorry if I butchered that name. Says, thanks so much for these daily recaps. You have a great sense of humor. Thank you. Look, sometimes the writing is so bad, you got to make fun of it, right? You got to poke some fun. And then Sheila says, Chase already knows Tracy's wrote Brook Brooklyn into doing her dirty work. Brooklyn broke down and confessed to him after he figured out uh, what Tracy was holding over her head. She told, she told him she asked Tracy to help her get his job back. However, if I'm not sure if Chase knows exactly <clears throat> what else Tracy had her do. Yeah, I think she did tell him. Um, Lisa says, now Maxie figured out that Tracy made Brooklyn steal the information uh, for Tracy. Maxie can run to Crimson <laughs> when Nina took it from Julian. Wait, Maxie had to run Crimson. Yeah, when Nina took it from Julian. Maxie had uh, to show Nina how to run the layout. Yes, she did. And how to set up the print. Maxie has skills. She has a lot of skills. And Lisa also says, Sonny laid down the last, what do you mean, last or law? Uh, to Miss Wu about the Savoy. Selena wants to get as much as she can out of Gladys before Sonny could put a stop to it. Dante tried to wake her up and he touched her arm. Dante has known about Sasha being in this condition for weeks now. Now he wants to look into it. The doctor's trying to freak Sasha out even more. I know. Um, flat is so stupid. Who's flat? She won't sacrifice to get Sasha released. Um, you, what are you talking about? Maybe Gladys? Uh, and then Gladys uh, didn't worry about Sasha until she got blackmailed by the doctor. Selena is going to take the money and tell Gladys she better get the rest of it. I know, because that's only part of the money. I think Sam is going to get caught snooping by the doctor. Gladys is worried about something could go wrong. Gladys is worried that something could go wrong, question mark. Something has gone wrong already. I know. Get Sonny's help. He can make sure Sasha gets released after that. Dr. Montague gets his money. Uh, No. Sonny is going to have Sasha released and kill that doctor. Not after he, that doctor wouldn't get a dime if Sonny knew. See, that's the thing. Sonny will be playing that. You are hurting my family and you think we're going to reward you with money? Think again, right? Sam saw that Gladys was calling him when he offered to uh, come to the Savoy, offered her to come to the Savoy Poker. Cody has not seen the doctor and Gladys together. Uh, she hasn't put that part together yet. No, I don't think so. Uh, LaShawn, LaShawn says Blair Kramer is going on General Hospital. You must be talking about the new guy for Nicholas. Yeah. Uh, in September. Anita says the doctor gave Sam his card and his telephone number, etc. Also, Sam saw Gladys's name in his phone. Um, Sam will not be able to put the information together. Sam will now be able to put the information together. This is getting interesting. Queen of the South says, Nina is going to give Gladys the money. I wouldn't give it directly to her. She said, give it, she could give it to Miss Wu. 
Uh, you're right, Daily Recap Lady. Coney got into Fern Cliff for the criminally insane. Uh, how's he going to get to Sasha? I can't stand that doctor. And then Deborah says, Sam knows the doctor is involved. Can't wait for Sonny to find out about him. Montague will be in trouble. Nina will tell Sonny and hope he is on time. Uh, in, hope he's on time. Sasha was out of it. I hope Sam doesn't get in trouble with the with this doctor. Nina needs to sell, tell Sonny he's the only one who could straighten out Wu and the doctor. P. Merle says, Sam knows more than we think she does. Most of the coffee spilling on the spilled on the doctor's phone. She saw Gladys's name. Dante is going to be pissed at Sam and Cody. Yes, he is. Lashuns says Sam McCall should have told Dante what she was going to do. Yes, she should have because they are getting themselves in such a dangerous, dangerous situation. Well, that's it for uh, Comic Corner. I will be back tomorrow for another daily recap of General Hospital.